Hi guys, Rab here. Now a couple months ago I bought this, the Marvel Crisis Protocol Corset. Being a huge Marvel fan, I loved the opportunity to play a Marvel board game as well as paint some Marvel miniatures. Now, since I got it, I've played a couple of games with my nephew and with my girlfriend and we've all really enjoyed the game. However, the box cost me £80 and none of the miniatures have been painted yet. So I really need to get started on that. Now the core set retails for around about £80, that's how much it is on Amazon at the moment anyway. Included in it you've got the rule book, all the tokens you'll ever need, a bunch of terrain and the measurement sticks for both movement and attacks. Also included are 10 different miniatures for you to build and paint, which is a pretty good deal in terms of miniatures anyway. Now I'm not a great painter by any stretch of the imagination, but I hope by showing how I paint these models I can inspire some people to pick up a brush for the first time or maybe after a long break. Now one of the best things about these miniatures is you can paint them however you want. All of these characters have hundreds of different iterations from different comic books, TV shows, movies and video games over the years. Now with Spider-Man I was originally going to paint him in the symbiote suit from Spider-Man 3 but I instead settled for the advanced suit from the PS4 Spider-Man game. So before we get started, here are all the paints that I use today. You'll notice they're all Citadel paints from Games Workshop. That's purely down to availability for me. If you use other paints, you can use conversion charts to see which ones fit. So I primed this model using a white spray can that I got from my local car shop. You can use the fancy expensive ones from Games Workshop or elsewhere if you want. I used white as opposed to black because this isn't grim dark 40k, these are bright comic book colours that I'm looking for, so white it is. So the first thing we want to do is take our Kalidor Sky, or whatever blue you have to hand, and start applying it to the blue areas of Spider-Man's costume. Now this is just the first coat, we're doing two very thin coats, so water your paints down, and don't worry about making any mistakes, we can fix those later. So after a couple of coats of blue, we'll then move on to Mephist in red and do a couple of coats of the red portions of his costume. And once again, we're really not worried about any mistakes we might make right now. We can go back and fix them later. We just want a couple of bright coats of red paint on the costume. Next we'll bring out our Korax White, which we'll use to highlight the spider on the front and back of the costume, as well as some strips on the arms and legs and the eyes. Next we're going to attempt the most difficult part of the costume yet, the circles around the eyes and we're going to use a bad and black for this. Now we'll move on to our base and we'll start with Mechanicus Standard Grey which we'll use to paint the cement at the bottom of the base.
Next we'll move on to Administratum Grey, which we'll use to paint some of the rubble on the scenery. Now we'll move on to the steel beam, or the girder if you're Scottish. Now you could paint this any type of metallic colour like lead belcher, but I'm going for retributor armour because I feel like there's a lot of grey on the base already and I really want this to stand out against it. Now that all the base coats are down, it's time to apply some shades and let those dry. So the first shade we'll add is Drakenhof Nightshade, which will apply to all the blue areas of the armour. Now, when you're applying shade, Try not to let it pull on flat areas, push it around your brush into all the crevices. Once that's complete, we use Reikland Flesh Shade for the red portions of the armour. Now GW do a red shade called Carabair Crimson I believe, unfortunately I don't have it, so Reikland Flesh Shade it is. When you're applying this shade on the red portion of the armour, pay special attention. Most of the red parts of the armour have webbing design on them, so you really want to get the shade in between all of those cracks. Now we'll move on to the base using the old favourite, Nuln Oil. Use this on the cement and the rocks, being sure to push it into every crack, crag and crevice you can find. Once that's complete, we'll move on to another favourite, Agrax Airshade, which we'll use to add a nice rusted look to the steel girder. Now that that's complete, we'll just leave the shades to dry, ideally a couple of hours, but I was getting tired so I just left overnight. The next day. And this is the model after the shade is dried. You see how the shade adds so much depth to the model, especially around the webbing. Now because the shade dulls down a lot of the colour, you want to go over the parts again with your base colours, keeping the paint out of the recesses and letting the shade stay there. Once the red's been touched up, we'll go back and do the same with our blue, using the calendar or sky again. Once we've finished with the blue, we'll then go back to Korax White, which will apply to any white parts of the model. Once all that's done, we can move on to the highlighting. Starting with Evil Sun's Scarlet, we'll highlight the red portions of the armour, paying special attention to parts of the armour that are upper facing, so ones that would catch most of the light, being sure not to cover Everything we've already done in Mephis and Red, you only want to cover maybe 50% of it. It's a highlight, not a colour. Now before we move on to the blue, I want to highlight some of the white parts, mainly the eye and the spider on the front and back, so I'm going to use white scarf for this.
With the white highlighted, we can move on to the blue. I'm going to use this Lothurn blue colour, which I'm really looking forward to using. It's a very nice shade of blue and I think it's going to work nicely here. Now the problem with highlighting these large flat areas like the legs is there's nothing really to catch the eye, so you just have to sort of highlight where you think the light would hit most. Another idea is to highlight the muscle that sticks out as well. Now we're going to go back to the base, give that a highlight. We're going to highlight the cement first, we're going to be using Mechanica Standard Grey again, but this time we're going to apply it with a dry brush. And then we'll go back to our administratum grey which will dry brush lightly over the rocks and rubbles. And finally some Ricard flesh which we'll use just at the tips of the rocks applying very lightly. And our final highlight colour is Liberator Gold, which we'll use to highlight that rusty old girder hiding under the rubble. And this is what you should be left with at the end, your friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man to add to your collection. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed painting Spider-Man today. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing to the channel or sharing the video with a friend. All of this helps the channel grow. If you are interested in any of the products that I used, the link to them is in the description below. These are Amazon affiliate links, so they do help the channel at no extra cost to you. If you want me to paint a specific model from the set, please comment let me know which one. Until next time, see you later.